Hello and welcome to the Monday, June 12th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. For all the reverse engineers among you, we do have a write-up by Xavier about a PowerShell backdoor. This one was not detected by antivirus. And one of the things that made a little bit more clandestine was the fact that it was using the file name that's commonly used for PowerShell profile files. PowerShell profiles are being executed whenever you start PowerShell. So it's kind of a auto run like thing uh, that uh, you run to set up your environment uh, for example correctly and it uses a set of reserved uh, file names like in this case microsoft.powershell underscore profile dot ps1 the script itself connects uh, to a command control server it does uh, retrieve cryptographic material uh, then from the command control server and lately connects uh, to receive additional commands and of course as usual xavier has additional details about how to deal with this type of powershell script and what it exactly did one item to note as xavier wrote up the diary the particular command control server was actually still active and if you're interested in seeing what to expect if you are running one of our honeypots, Guy has a summary of what his honeypot detected last month. So a quick review of all the different logs, some of the top tens that he saw and log volume, just to give you an idea kind of all of the attacks that an average IP address tends to be exposed to. And then we do have a second vulnerability in MoveIt. Uh, remember, MoveIt, uh, the company behind it, Progress, uh, released a patch for MoveIt end of May. It was immediately widely being exploited, in particular by the Klopp ransomware gang lately. And now we do have a second vulnerability in the same product. A patch was released on Friday, and uh, you definitely should apply it quickly. Given that the first uh, vulnerability was exploited very quickly, we assume the second one is going to be exploited as well. Now, the first vulnerability apparently had been exploited for a while, uh, but not very widely. And the Klopp ransomware gang apparently already had sort of a target list uh, going for it. In our sensors, we have not seen exploitation of the actual vulnerability. We are not really emulating a uh, move it so it wouldn't show up as vulnerable however we have seen widespread scanning for the backdoor that's being dropped by the exploit there are of course a number of backdoors that can be blocked uh, typically web shells are being seen here but uh, one appears to be apparently common and that's a uh, human 2.asp that's uh, the file name that you usually see for this backdoor and that one is actively being searched for so patch your move it systems keep http hps disabled for now if you can at all and then watch out for these web shells that may have been left behind by attackers and don't just look for the specific names any name is possible here. And talking about tools that keep on giving, Fortinet released an update for its SSL VPN appliance. It fixes a vulnerability CVE 2023-27997 that does allow for remote code execution pre-authentication, even enabling two-factor authentication, apparently doesn't make a difference here. The problem is that you won't actually, at least right now, find anything on Fortinet's website itself. The patch is available, has been available for a couple of days, but it's Fortinet's common practice to not release any vulnerability details uh, while after the actual patch was released. Uh, was just basically leaked i guess you can call it by the researchers that originally reported the vulnerability to fortinet 
Lex4 Security, the company that uh, reported the bug uh, to Fortinet, uh, promised more details at a later time. Uh, no exact date has been uh, given yet, so probably something that you want to patch uh, this morning. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening. If you like this podcast, please recommend it to your friends, enemies, or pets, or whoever you want to have listen to this podcast. Any comments, questions, or so, please use our contact forum or, well, just reach out to me via social media. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.